What it do, Dream Team? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with why the U.S. drops 14.7 million worms on Panama every week. I didn't know that that we had that many worms. Like, to the capability of dropping 14 points. Set, we talking about earthworm? What kind of worms we talking about? Because I feel like I'm going to get on here and I'm thinking it's earthworms and it's going to be some kind of different kind of worm. So we're going to jump into the video before I look stupid. However, before we do, if you happen to enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, let's dive right in. Fun fact, there's a roughly 86% chance that today, the day you're watching this, the United States airdropped millions of live flies over the Panama-Columbia border. And no, what it the? wasn't one of our classic pranks, like when we dropped that big pie on Belize. No, this is a part of a decades-long collaboration that keeps nearly the entire North American continent safe from, and bear with me here, the exact species of fly we're dropping. But this massive, intricate, and deeply weird, quote, idiotic insect sex scheme is actually working. But how? What, what on a day-to-day -day basis does it take to keep flying, flesh-eating freaks out of this much space? The short answer, a 24-7 bug factory, planes, boats, trucks, loads of inspectors, x-rays, cow blood, wound paint, and, this is true, donut holes. Also grit and gumption and the spirit of a champion. But what as for the long answer, it starts on. with knowing our enemy, the new world screw worm. And I know neither you nor I want to look at them, so here's the plan. One, we're putting in a progress bar. Two, I've encouraged my editors to make this as metaphorical as possible. Three, dancing clown. So here we go. <laughs> First, they're not nice guys. If they were still bugging around the US today, they'd be costing farmers somewhere in the ballpark of a billion dollars in dead livestock a year. And it's not just cattle at risk. These things can infect, even kill, any living, warm-blooded mammal. Yes, including people. Yes, including your oh, dog. Yeah. Yes, including Gritty. See, I was, this is this is insanity because I don't even know what a screw worm is. I I don't I don't even know what it is. I don't know if I've ever heard of a screw worm, but maybe the U.S. just doing its job to the fact that I ain't got to worry about screw worms. I don't know. Gee, they could be costing farmers nine hundred million annually. Is wild. These bad boys are about twice the size of a normal house fly and a thousand uh -uh. times as rude. Their 10 to 30 day lifespan begins when females lay their eggs hundreds at a time in a live animal's open wound. Take oh bites, my scratches, God. fresh belly buttons. They hatch as worms and hook into the animal's flesh, which they then eat, which is extremely painful and often deadly for the host animal. Once the wormies are fattened up, they drop to the ground, pupate, emerge as flies, and the cycle repeats. Okay, we're done. This is Edward F. Knipling. He grew up dealing yeah. with screw worms on his family's farm and went on to spend Ooh. most of his career researching them. And here was his big finding. Female screw worms only mate once in their lives, which means that if you can mess that up, they destroy themselves in a couple generations. And after many huh. years and many Thursday afternoon trips to the military hospital with his buddy Raymond to blast worm larvae with x-rays, Knipling learned that you can sterilize a fly if you x-ray it 5.5 to 5.7 days into its pupil stage. That discovery wow. is the backbone of what I'm calling the Great American Worm Wall. You can't see it from space crazy. or from the ground. It's invisible. They done figured out how to sterilize these goddamn... Well, I'll tell you, man. Technology and people, humanity, it's, it, it's beyond imaginable. What we're capable of doing and the technology that we've built, it's just... It, it's truly, truly fascinating. Like, people research so much into figuring this stuff out. It blows my mind. They sterilize the worms. Wow. But it's nevertheless an extremely tight border. Here's how it works. Here in Pecora, Panama, this factory employs 115 people to cook up and churn out sterile screw worms, 20 million of them a week. That's the flies crazy. are raised in a series of humidity and temperature controlled rooms that mimic the warm and inviting atmosphere of an open wound. They eat a nasty brown goop made of reconstituted milk, egg, and powdered cow's blood thickened with some cellulose. Oh. Which is actually good to know because I have all this powdered cow's blood in my cabinet, which I bought for like one recipe, and now I have all this left over and nothing to use it for. So annoying. Once the worms are old enough, they each get hit with radioactive cobalt 60, and it's off to the airport. The sterilized pupae arrive in coolers, then get sorted into trays, and once they grow into adult flies, they go to a cold room where they get nice and sleepy before what is sure to be one of the craziest possible days any creature on this planet can have. But now, the fun part. Airplanes! 
COPEG, the joint U.S. Panama Commission that runs this whole thing, and also a heavy lifting acronym, uses retired military turboprop planes that have been specially retrofitted to drop flies through the floor of the plane at an adjustable rate. Once upon a time, technicians just threw cardboard boxes out, but those didn't always open on impact, which defeated the whole purpose. Over the course of a four-hour flight, the plane will drop 2.1 million flies over this region of Panama. Oh flies that God. will wake up as they hurtle down to Earth to eradicate their own species. Or as I like to put it, the screw worms screw worms to screw screw worms. Now, the math whizzes among you may have worked out that 2.1 million flies over six weekly flights doesn't add up to the 20 million the factory produces weekly. Oh, There's wait, so, 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 because the females only mate one times in their lives, I'm guessing all the screw worms, they're releasing only males in Panama. It looks like they do, they have, to, they make 20 million weekly, but I, I'll bet you, I could be wrong on this, but they're only taking all the males over there and dropping the males in that area, just mate with the female worms, so that the female worms have gotten their one mating session in their entire lives out of the way, yet they will produce no eggs. Therefore, screw worms are not a problem the species will eradicate themselves and they will not continue. Hmm. That's very smart. Okay. But let's let's see if my theory or my at least my guess about why they're not dropping 20 million a week is right. Ice over six weekly flights doesn't add up to the 20 million the factory produces weekly. But there's plenty of use for the leftovers. See, the New World screw worm hasn't actually been eradicated from all of North America. Cuba, for example, still has them, and they're still rampant in South America. So Ooh. all those excess worms fight outbreaks when they happen. Aruba had ones in 2004 and 2011, and when they popped up in the Florida Keys in 2016, the USDA rocked up with 190 million flies, released three generations, and re-eradicated them in a matter of months. God also part dang. Of first, they had 200 people trawling around the Keys feeding infected deer anti-parasite meds stuffed in donut holes, which implies the existence of a federal donut budget, or FDB, which is exciting to me. But this also well, I guess my theory was wrong, but let's continue. Brings up another part of the worm wall, the ground game. Yes, the it's raining men strat does a lot, but Copec also monitors animals across the dairy and ensuring fertile screwworms that slip through the cracks don't make it far. They work from 13 field posts, traveling on boat, horse, and motorcycle to monitor at-risk farms. Every farm gets an inspection either monthly, four monthly, or annually, depending how Copeg has assessed their risk, and cattle leaving the dairy oh. and all get inspected, and any worms they have get coated in anti-parasite paint that would kill any screwworms that might be in there. In all, the worm wall costs about $15 million a year. More money than the worm wall in my apartment cost, but an incredible deal for the money and lives it saves. But the project yeah. didn't come out of the gates this well oiled. Or it's only 15 million per year, but saves farmers 900 million annually. That's a beautiful deal. Or this cheap. See, after scientists proved the sterile insect technique would work on screwworms in Curacao, the USDA took up the project here, east of the Mississippi, in 1957. Two years later, screwworms were gone from the southeast, and the effort moved west. We declared ourselves screwworm free by 1966 and had a Dang. sterile fly factory up and running in Texas. But maintaining the border in the west proved challenging and expensive. Maybe because while the eastern range of the fly was bordered by water, the western range was bordered by, well, more range. With that in mind, in 1972, the U.S. struck up a deal with Mexico. Instead of having to maintain a 2,000-mile Great American Worm Wall at the U.S.-Mexico border, how about we eradicate all the way down to here, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, which is only 120 miles across? The two countries agreed to split the bill based on the value of the livestock it would save in each place. Mexico paid 20%, while the U.S. paid 80%, and by 1982, the Texas Worm Factory was closed and replaced by one in Tuxla, Mexico, and Mexico declared Sonora and Baja California Norte worm free. But why stop there? If you're going to move the worm border here, right. why not move it here? And so right. began the not always smooth process of trying to work an agreement with every individual country in Central America, having them work alongside the US with whom That's they didn't crazy. all have um, awesome relationships at the time Ooh. to go screw worm free. And it worked. From 1987 to 2006, they eradicated the screw worm from all these places, with the Central American oh countries splitting costs with the U.S. at a ratio of 15 to 85, and the U.S. and Panama ending up with shared responsibility for staffing the border, and Colombia still having to give monthly permission to COPEC to drop out a bunch of screw worms in the part yeah, of the buffer yeah. zone they control. So the U.S. was like, hey, we don't, we don't ever want these screw worms to be affecting none of the stuff we got going on over here. So we will help y'all 
and we will we will foot the bulk of the bill in helping you guys. We are going to eradicate them as far down as we possibly can because we had no use for this fly. This fly needs to die out. We we gonna extinct this species as far down as we can. Roll. All to say, the Great American Worm Ball is a pretty amazing thing. It's effective, it saves tons That's of wild. lives and money, and it does its job so well that most of us don't even know it's there. Put another exactly. way, it's a great example of what's possible when you combine passionate, if slightly wacky scientists with government agencies that are actually willing to foot the bill for weird, expensive, but ultimately great solutions to big problems. Too bad that lesson isn't applicable literally anywhere else. Oh well. Okay, Actually, so remember earlier when I said I had a bunch of powdered blood in my kitchen? That was a lie. What I actually have in my kitchen is delicious pre-made meals from- Okay, we're gonna skip the sponsorship. Uh, but I think that's truly, truly incredible. Like, that's absolutely fire that they're able to eradicate this species all the way that far down. And shout out to the scientist, the researcher, who figured out how to sterilize screw worms. Like, Bro, people are incredible. I'll tell you that. Uh, that's awesome. That's all we have, though. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please don't forget to subscribe. Get a video a thumbs up. Uh, and check out this next video. Since, since you were so interested, check out the next one. See you guys next time.